Recent study has shown evidence that another continent exists on planet Earth. For centuries, we've been taught that Earth has a settled number of continents. Seven to be specific. The maps look complete. The list feels final. But what if one of the largest land masses on the planet never made it onto the map at all? Beneath the Pacific Ocean, years ago, geologists began noticing details that didn't belong where they were found, raising questions that refused to go away. It's been there for 100 million years, but it's newly discovered, and that's because it's been underneath the ocean and, and hiding. What started as a few strange measurements turned into a global geological puzzle, one that might finally have been solved now that geologists have mapped Earth's hidden eighth continent. How many continents? Ask almost anyone how many continents exist, and the answer comes quickly. Seven. It's what we learn in school, what we see on maps, and what feels settled beyond debate. Yet even that number isn't as fixed as it seems. Depending on convention, Europe and Asia can be counted together or separately, and different models recognize different totals. What rarely gets questioned is the assumption behind all of them that continents are defined by what rises above sea level. Geology doesn't work that way. It cares about crust thickness, composition, and history, whether the land is dry or drowned. For decades, scientists have argued that an entire continent was left off the list, not because it was destroyed or shattered, but because almost all of it sits far below the ocean's surface. So far below that, it never appeared on conventional maps and never fit neatly into existing categories. If that argument is correct, then the familiar count of Earth's continents isn't just incomplete, it's misleading. And that leads to a harder question scientists struggled with for years. How could something nearly 2 million square miles in size exist in plain sight, yet remain effectively invisible? An oversight that some researchers now describe as one of Earth's big secrets. The first warning signs didn't come from maps or satellite images, they came from the crust itself. As scientists studied the Pacific seafloor, they kept encountering rock that didn't behave the way the ocean floor is supposed to. Measurements showed crust that was thicker than expected, and dating revealed rock that was far older than normal oceanic material. More importantly, the composition didn't match. Oceanic crust is typically dominated by basalt, a dense volcanic rock formed at mid-ocean ridges, but in several regions of the South Pacific, basalt wasn't dominant at all. Instead, the crust showed geological complexity, multiple rock types layered across time, something normally associated with continents, not deep sea basins. Individually, these findings could have been dismissed as local anomalies, but they weren't isolated. The same pattern appeared repeatedly across wide areas. Each new data set quietly reinforced the same conclusion, if this was ocean floor, it was breaking too many rules. And if it wasn't the ocean floor, then something much larger was sitting beneath the water. A continent mostly underwater. That hidden landmass has a name, Zealandia. It stretches across nearly 2 million square miles beneath the Pacific Ocean, making it far larger than most people imagine, even though about 95% of it lies below sea level. Only small portions rise above the water, with New Zealand forming the most recognizable exposed section, alongside New Caledonia and a scattering of smaller Pacific islands. For a long time, those islands were treated as isolated features resting on ordinary oceanic crust. That assumption made sense on the surface. But as more geological data accumulated, it became harder to defend. The surrounding seabed didn't resemble typical ocean floor and the inconsistencies kept pointing back to the same possibility that these islands were simply the visible peaks of a much larger structure below. To understand how Zealandia ended up in this state, scientists had to look deep into Earth's past. Hundreds of millions of years ago, much of the Southern Hemisphere was joined together in a massive supercontinent known as Gondwana. South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and several other land masses formed a single continuous structure. As Gondwana slowly broke apart, reportedly driven by shifting tectonic plates, its pieces drifted away over millions of years. Zealandia separated roughly 80 million years ago, initially remaining connected to Australia and Antarctica. At that stage, it still looked much like its neighbors with continental crust thick enough to remain elevated. But as separation continued, Zealandia's crust began to thin. 
unlike Australia or much of Antarctica, it lost the structural support needed to stay buoyant. That difference in thickness would ultimately determine its fate, sending it headfirst into the depths of the ocean. Why Zealandia didn't stay above water? For many years, the prevailing explanation was that Zealandia split away through a strike-slip breakup, where tectonic plates slide sideways past each other. That model explained separation, but it couldn't explain why such a large landmass would sink so extensively. As more evidence accumulated, a different picture emerged. Zealandia's crust wasn't sliding, it was stretching. As tectonic forces pulled the plates apart, the crust thinned unevenly, weakening the continent from within. Over time, that thinning made it vulnerable to flooding, allowing large sections to sink beneath the ocean instead of remaining buoyant like Australia or Antarctica. Even after sinking, Zealandia continued to behave like continental land. Earth's crust comes in two main forms. Oceanic crust is thin, dense, and dominated by basalt. Continental crust is thicker, lighter, and built from many different rock types formed in varied environments over long periods of time. Zealandia's crust belongs to this latter category. Across the South Pacific, scientists consistently recovered materials that matched the continental profile. Pebbly and cobbly sandstone, fine-grained sandstone, mudstone, bioclastic limestone, and basaltic lava appeared where a simple ocean floor should have dominated. These rocks form in rivers, shallow seas, coastlines, and volcanic arcs, environments not associated with deep ocean crust. Just as important, these materials weren't confined to one small area. They appeared across large distances, forming patterns that suggested continuity rather than scattered fragments. The evidence increasingly pointed toward a single connected landmass. Still, without data from the least explored regions, doubt remained. There was only one way to know for sure. We'd have to sink to the same depths Zealandia had reached and check with our own eyes. Going to the seafloor for proof. The uncertainty centered on North Zealandia. While parts of the continent had been studied before, the northern two-thirds remained poorly mapped in geological terms. Without that information, critics could still argue that Zealandia was incomplete or fragmented. To resolve the issue, an international research team from GNS Science of New Zealand, led by geologist Nick Mortimer, turned to direct sampling of the seafloor. They dredged rock samples from a wide stretch of ocean, from Fairway Ridge to the Coral Sea, targeting regions that had never been examined in detail. Each sample was dated, its chemistry analyzed, and its magnetic signature compared against regional tectonic patterns. This kind of reconnaissance mapping doesn't capture every fine detail, but it's designed to establish large-scale continuity, enough to determine whether an entire continent exists as a single structure. By the time the analyses were complete, the final blank spaces on the map were gone. The rocks revealed a clear and continuous geological timeline. Sandstone dated to around 95 million years ago from the late Cretaceous period. Granite and volcanic pebbles extended back as far as 130 million years into the early Cretaceous. Younger basaltic lava dated to roughly 40 million years ago from the Eocene. When this information was combined with magnetic anomalies and tectonic mapping, the structure of Zealandia emerged as a single, coherent landmass. As the researchers stated in the journal Tectonics, this work completes offshore reconnaissance geological mapping of the entire Zealandia continent. At that point, the conclusion was unavoidable. Zealandia wasn't a collection of fragments. It was a continuous continent, nearly 2 million square miles in size, mapped in full for the first time. The completed map also explained how Zealandia reached its current state. The evidence supported that the continent didn't break apart cleanly along a single fault. Instead, its crust stretched unevenly over time and created what is now the Tasman Sea. Similar internal deformation patterns were observed in parts of West Antarctica, reinforcing the stretching model. The discovery is revolutionary, but what does it mean for us? What a hidden continent really means. Zealandia didn't suddenly become Earth's eighth continent. It always was one. What changed was our ability to recognize what had quietly remained one of Earth's big secrets for generations. What makes Zealandia controversial isn't its geology, but the meaning of the word continent itself. There is no official scientific body that defines 
how many continents Earth has or what criteria must be used to identify one. In everyday geography, continents are large landmasses that rise above sea level and are separated by oceans. Geology, however, uses a different standard, focusing on crust thickness, composition, and geological history, regardless of whether that crust is submerged. Under geological criteria, Zealandia clearly qualifies as a continent, even though most of it lies underwater. Being underwater made Zealandia inconvenient to classify as a continent, but not incorrect. And although most of the continent may never host inhabitants, at least not land-based ones, fully mapping it matters for reasons far beyond human settlement. It preserves geological records untouched by erosion and human activity, offering rare insight into how continents stretch, thin, and reshape Earth's surface over time. And if a continent this large could remain overlooked simply because it lay out of sight, it leaves behind a quieter question. How much of our planet do we still assume is settled? Simply because we haven't learned how to see it yet? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video with us and catch you in the next one.